about. I'm a former drug dealer. Uh, being to prison used to beat my mother. Teachers, no problem, we used to beat. I've done abortions. <laughs> But one of the major things I want to share about is the power of pain. All of us have something that we go through and you feel pain, right? Yes. Right. I come from downtown and of downtown in Kamwacha. So, I'm better than where. And I want to be real with you. Amen, young people. Right now, I'm 31 years of age. But... Ten years before this 31, 31st birthday, I almost died in a labor ward having an abortion. And the reason I ended up pregnant was simply because I lost my father to HIV AIDS. And when he died, I could not handle the pain. When I could not handle the pain, I thought, can, can, can we respect the fact that some people need to learn? Thank you. Because I could not handle the pain, I found another way to deal with it, but not heal, but to hide it. <coughs> what did I do? I started sleeping around. And any man I found in the club who said hi, we ended up sleeping together. The worst part about it is I never used protection. <coughs> and I'm not talking one guy, two guys, I'm talking in double numbers. <coughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. <coughs> and I want to talk to you about the power pain it caused me. Because of the pain I could not deal with by talking to someone, I ended up building another door. The door was sexual promiscuity. After the sexual promiscuity, I had unprotected sex. Out of unprotected sex, I ended up pregnant at 19. My mother had just buried a husband who had died of HIV AIDS. I am my mother's third daughter and I was in a labor ward having an abortion. Because I could not handle the pain, I almost lost my life. Because the doctors say they almost lost me because of the crude way they used to get rid of a child that was innocent. Every one of us has pain. Some of us are not understood at school. You'll be around your friends. Some of us resort to getting a smoke. Because you just need your brain to calm down and your heart to feel at home. Why? Probably at home there is so much luck. And I know it's a government school, which means most of us have parents who are humble and struggling to put us through school. Am I talking sense to someone? Yes. Which means sometimes it's hard to catch up with life. Especially, for example, some of you come from very far to just show up in class. Why? To just make a better life. <coughs> And sometimes, some of us come from families where we are abandoned by our parents, and that is pain enough. You find yourself in class at 14, at 16, the teacher is teaching, your mind is so far because you're worried, where does tuition come from? Where does my mother get medicine from? And I came to tell you that pain can be used for good. Can I tell you how? Yes. Every day you wake up from morning to evening. Don't use that pain to learn smoking. That will be wasted pain. Don't use that pain to enter groups. It will be wasted pain. Use that pain to make sure you're inspired to wake up every morning and get that book. Even when they sleep, you're like, I cannot live like this. I have to do something. Read that book. Ask the teacher the question. That is pain that can turn into success. <laughs> single moment. Let me tell you, if you survived that pain and maybe you were abused and you're still here, that means you're still in the ring and you can make it my boy. Let me tell you something. You don't need somebody successful to come tell you you can be successful. The fact that you've survived all you've survived from when you were a child, you're a winner in the making. And I have to tell you this. Winners don't sit around memberships of people who don't have purpose. There are some conversations you don't need to be a part of because you're better than that. There are some punishments you're not supposed to be a part of because you got to do better for a something better future. You know what I'm <laughs> and let me tell you something. Let me 
tell you something, young man, young woman. Sufferings of your sick being a button is stupid. Wait until you walk down the aisle and your husband says, I have the prettiest woman because she preserved herself. That is success. <laughs> and if you are, if you are a young man, if you are a young man who wants to do something with your pain, you can't look at every woman and think sex. No, baby, you gotta look at a woman and see something you respect. Because when you respect them, somebody out there is respecting the person who is gonna become your wife. So that means, because some of us think we can do these things and do the stupid stuff and God gives us a good thing. God loves his people. God is not gonna give a good man a, a very terrible woman. God is a good father. Which means you reap what you, you reap what you, use that pain to build a future. That anybody who looks at you to tell them it was not because I was smart. I got the pain the enemy had caused for me to die young and premature and a drunkard. And I said I'm going to do something with my future and look at me today. Why do I tell you what I'm telling you? Because I was someone on the enemy's list for death. I sold drugs and survived. I entered prison and survived. I slept around and my blood is still negative. Let me tell you, when God gave me a second chance, I never looked back. And today, 10 years later, many people look at me as an example. The person who used to be a curse is a blessing now. Use the curse. From the place where everyone in my town said, if you become like that curse of a child, you don't come back here. From a place where my father, who died, but before he died, he said, if I ever become anything, you will commit suicide. To a place of Zabuli is a role model in this generation. God can do it for you too. It is possible. There is nothing like it requires you to be smart. You just have to make clear decisions for you. Use that pain for your advantage. Use that the, the fact that there is no, nothing at home. Learn to do stuff. Learn to be a smart kid. Learn to be obedient. And let me tell you, you can become something. And in conclusion, this is my word for you. As I conclude, this is what I'm going to tell you. Everyone under the sound of my voice is a great man or a great woman. You just have to make the decision because you already are. Nothing. And I mean absolutely nothing. Not even the clan members in Mubakuroga. Not even your mother was raped to give birth to you. Not even when you are an orphan. Nothing can stop you from becoming what you choose to become in this life. <laughs> And yes, some of you are clapping and getting excited, but I know in there there is someone who has heard this and their spirit is like, I think I can do better. Yes, you can be the beginning of a great thing in your family. You can be the beginning of a great thing all the way in this town. You can be the one that survived and did not die because of drunkenness. You can be a girl and who is really pretty and you don't have to walk naked. Yes, baby, good people can look good without getting naked. You can be a woman of fire and a woman of Purpose. No man can stop you from being great. Absolutely not. And if you walk with that in every class you go to, we don't know what you're going to become, but the world has not yet met greatness until it makes you. And I would love to pray and believe that because you're going to choose to do right by your purpose, to wake up and study and be something. We will meet on the streets of success in a different country and you're going to tell me, Zabuli, on that day I had you and I made a choice and my family is the richest in the state of California. Yes, you can be. You can be the greatest engineer. With God as my witness, if you make a choice today to be that person, the world would be a better place because you were given birth to. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah.